Hey, Will here from aerialmediapros.com, back with another tech video for you guys, and in this one, we're gonna be soldering up battery leads. All right, I get a lot of calls from customers asking, hey, I got the right battery, but the wrong connector. What do we do? Well, chances are when you buy a battery, it's gonna have the wrong connector on it. So you need to be prepared to buy the right connectors that you do need, know which ones you do need, male or female, and then be able to solder them up. We need to have the tools to do so as well. Uh, right here we got wire strippers, right connectors that we have right here. So this is the AS150s, XT150s. Um, this isn't really necessary right here, but this is, uh, these are the big snips, so these help with uh, larger gauge wires. Um, we got needle nose pliers, those are always helpful. We have a soldering jig along with the flux right here and a little clamp right here that's really nice and useful. Uh, of course, we got the battery in question with the wrong connector on it, and we got our soldering iron with solder. All right, first things first, we need to get the wrong connector off of here. Now, this is a charged battery, so we want to make sure that we're not cutting through both leads at the same time, or we have two open leads. So we want to take the big snips, because this will get in between uh, the wires without cutting them both at the same time. We just get right in there. And we only want to cut one at a time. So when we cut them, we want to just squeeze real quick, comes off. Now, right now, this is an open lead. So we want to keep the black one on so we avoid any uh, short circuits. Okay. Now that we have the bare lead right here, we want to take our, our wire strippers right here. Make sure you got a wire stripper that has up to 10 gauge because 12 gauge isn't going to cut it. That's a pun intended. All right, now that we strip the housing, we only need to do about a quarter, or maybe I would say an eighth of an inch. And that's good enough right there. Take our soldering jig, and then raise it right above there, so that we have some room right there. And now, when we use flux, this is a Kester 951. This is what the fluid is right here. This is an MG Chemicals one right here. Uh, so we want to use a lot of flux on this. We want to have the solder flow really nicely into this power lead because we do not want a power lead to fail, especially while we're in the air. So go ahead and just use a lot of flux. We basically want to saturate the wire with flux. I recommend the Kester 951. This is my favorite flux. Um, using stuff that you get from, say, like an Ace Hardware or something like that, which is Plumber's Flux, uh, that's not what we need. We need something that's a little bit more fluid than that. That's more of a gel consistency anyways. So just keep filling that up. And then let it soak in. Now, it's time to get our soldering iron out. And again, just like the flux, we need to use a lot of solder. Uh, we do not want cold solder joints or just very little solder that's brittle and will break on you. Power leads aren't something that you want to fail. So here we go, we're waiting for the solder to catch. All right. Once the wires heat up a little bit, uh, the solder will flow a little bit easier into it. So basically we just got to keep saturating the wire until it fills up and then uh, it'll soak down inside the wire and that's when you need to add a little bit more flux. We just want to keep the soldering iron on there so it'll just heat up the whole thing and have it flow throughout. That looks pretty good right there. I'll just wait for this to solidify.
There we go. And then now I always check for the depth of the solder by bending it like this. You can see at the bend, this is about an inch right here. This is a really good uh, tinning job right here. So we want the solder to go all the way back into it. So there we go, this is good right here. It's a little hot. And then now we want to take our positive lead right here and we want to tin this too. Now we can use flux on this as well, but it is not necessary, especially not with the solder that I'm using it has a rosin core on it. So let's go ahead and heat this up as well. This is going to be hard for you guys to see. Just make sure that solder spreads throughout. Sometimes you can use your soldering iron like a brush and just brush the, the solder all over the connector on the inside. Make sure the solder doesn't get in on any of the threads on this AS150. You have to check uh, for your connector particularly to see if, uh, if getting solder on the outside will potentially ruin the connector. All right. So now always with soldering, whether using heat shrink or um, lead cover like this one right here, we always want to put on heat shrink or lead covers or anything like that first before we solder it onto the connector. Because once we get the connector on, we won't be able to get the heat shrink over it. All right, so now we just want to stick this in. Heat up the wire and you'll see the solder that you've put into the connector prior is heating up and flowing with the solder that's on the connector right now. It's flowing nicely and again you just want to add a lot of solder. Solder does what's called surface bonding and the more surface area that you have on a connection like this, which is why we use a lot of solder, the better. Because it's got more areas for it to grab onto. And again, guys, you just want to keep your soldering iron on it pretty much the whole time because you want to avoid cold solder joints. Ah, there we go. So now we have one connector on there right now. And that's not going anywhere. And then now we just want to cover this up. So even though it's still hot, we can still connect the, the lead covers on there. And then now, now that this is covered up, we can cut the ground in and we'll still be avoiding any short circuits. So here we go again, pretty much the same thing as the first one. Now you gotta watch on the XT150s because you don't want to be filling this up with too much solder. Otherwise it'll overflow. And again, you'll ruin the connector that way unless you have something to take away the solder. Lead cover on. And now let's just dip it in there. Oh, we're getting a little bit of overflow there. There we go, I bottomed out. And then heat it up so everything in the depth of the, of the wire underneath the housing gets melted as well. We want this to act like a single solder joint, not like two solder joints. Make sure the connector is parallel with the wire so that way you're not coming in at an angle. All right, there we go. Now this one's on.
both connectors are on and we're ready to go. All right, that's it for this tutorial, guys. Uh, hopefully this was helpful to some of you guys out there. If you're looking for light bulbs or connectors like this, uh, be sure to check out aerialmeterpros.com. We do have a wide selection on there for you guys. Go ahead and like this video if you like it. Uh, please leave a comment in the comment box for future tech videos for us. And as always, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.